and so many men out here have not heard that mm -hmm. and have not heard anything from a man mm -hmm. regarding a thing. You know, my sons get the littlest things. Pull up your pants like this, son, mm -hmm. you know? Right, yeah. Men, because men, men talk and interact on a man basis. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Women don't know that basis. There's a certain way you talk, a certain way you respect, a certain way you stand, a certain way to look, a certain way you posture, a certain way you inflect your words. Um, mm -hmm. These are men, because men speak in, you know, we're gruff, we know we, we speak, and a woman can't, it, 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 can you imagine a, a, a mom trying to teach her son, now when that man comes to the room, you gotta size him up, make sure, you know, mm -hmm. you know, look, look, at, look at his body language, he, you know, you know kind of how to, a, a, a mom can't do that. That's mm -hmm. man stuff. And so all the men that are broken out here, you know, from even from moms that have tried their best, there is a disconnect in how we can how we can just be men. Um, and that that's the huge thing. That's the driving factor behind all of this, yeah. in, in my opinion. Yeah. So um, we can all grow, but we have to f realize how broken we are and get back on the wheel and we can grow, you know, together. We mm -hmm. we. You know, we broke together. We have to build uh, together, or there's no, or, or there's no way up, and there's no hope. Yep. But in my opinion, that is the hope for for our society because we're we're seeing that, and and everyone is going through a healing process. We have to learn how to pull pull up, pull our, put our triggers back down, put the guns up. Let's stop blazing, <laughs> you know, and and we can move forward. But we can't move forward if we're shooting each other uh, mm -hmm. at the same time. We should be you know, patching each other's wounds, uh, you know, <laughs> salving and, and, and reconnecting those broken bonds and finding those pieces that are still there that, you know, you can just latch onto one and a one, you know, glue things back together, you know, and um, we can we can make ourselves whole again. Yep. So, so agree with you on that. And that this, this is this, that's a topic for a whole another podcast all by itself. Oh, yes. I, oh, yes. I do want to close this out and move on to the next session, because I think there's a piece of what you're saying that Edward, that's also critical. And that has to do with just the feminine and masculine energies and how mm -hmm. those things have, for whatever reasons, kind of flipped themselves between the genders as well. And, you know, obviously women have much more power they have much more uh, stronger careers they're mm -hmm. more independent than they have been in, in generations past right uh, erica you talked about that with i think your mother your grandmother and how you know she was a strong woman but from a business standpoint she wasn't necessarily let into that space you know those kinds of things well that shifted over over time so that brings for a woman more of a masculine energy in today's world right and then going back to what Edward is saying about a man who's generationally, you know, single parent home, that gives that man more of a feminine energy, right? Yeah. So now you yeah. have yeah. this conflict that's <laughs> going on between the two. Brian, you know, it's funny because, you know, I, I'll, I'll, re I'll say that sometimes. I said, man, I, that response I just had to something, that was such a single Black woman response, <laughs> you know? <laughs> and I'll, I'll catch myself like, you know that <laughs> I call my mom a man. I was I was a single black woman today. <laughs> I was, that was a, a bitter black woman response I just had there. You know, and we can laugh about that now because we've been able to uncover that with each other. Like, you know, I learned how to respond to situations by mimicking the way my mother responds. You know, to a situation, and, and when women meet guys that have that that tendency, it's like, and I say, hey, you know, it's they're not wrong they're just responding in the way that they learned how to respond you know so you know we can we can help each other like nah, there's a better way to do that but don't get don't kill each other over it just say hey he learned that way this guy learned that way you know mm -hmm. all of us are works in progress but if we can learn to open up and share with each other we can really see that you know and that's where our growth is that's where our spark is because that's <laughs> us we're, we're underneath that because before I was, you know, learned these things from my mother, I was someone, I was something. So I don't even have to hold on to that. And now that we've, we've uncovered it, I can put that to the side and say, oh no, that's, that's single black woman, Sean, right there. That's, that's, that's not a real deal. I, can, I don't need to wear that hat anymore um, because I'm here, I'm me, this is me. I'm in the bow tie that I wear to work every day. Yeah. That's my spark, that's, that's my shine, that's me. And that, that's the totem that I wear every day to symbolize this is this is the me. Everything yep. else is floating around me. 
everything that's in, that that I have to you know challenge with and contest with in life, all those conflicts, that, all that's just contrast, because I'm me in the middle. I'm in the middle here, and I can choose to pull in and reject what I don't want in there, yep. and I can continue to sign. And, that, you know, it's a perfect segue to the next thing we want to talk about, too, because what we want to talk about next is actually overcoming those that doubt, that self-doubt, that, mm. those fears. And that's really what it's all rooted in, is you, as you talked about earlier, Edward, digging back to find mm. out who you truly are, right? That reflective piece, that getting everything else out of the way, uh, finding some calm and some quiet and all of that so that you can figure out who you are. Because when, you, when you're not in that space, you do have all this doubt. You have all these fears because you don't even understand you. So how do you expect the rest of the world or your spouse or your, girl, oh, your, your boss, whoever else to be able to relate to you when you haven't even figured that piece of it out as well, right? So you have mm-hmm. this uh, situation going where you're trying to navigate your way through a world where you yourself are full of doubt and you're full of fears because you don't have a good, strong self-identity. So that's the, that's the next thing I want to talk about. So Erica, I'll come to you. From a self-identity mm-hmm. standpoint, what is it that you have done or what you've seen to, to really uh, give yourself that pedestal, I guess, where you feel comfortable, you stand tall, mm-hmm. this is who I am, this is what I believe in, and you stand by that? Yeah, Really being good to people, being kind and respectful to people, and being myself, not feeling that I have to be something or someone else to um, make a group like me, and really growing enough to know that not everything or everybody is my cup of tea, and I'm not necessarily everybody else's cup of tea. And it's okay, because there's there's a lot of cups out there. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Really, just learn just to be my authentic self. And if somebody doesn't uh, like it or like me, and I've been true to myself, it, it doesn't matter. And really accepting that, and then encouraging other people to feel the same way about themselves with that type of confidence and love for themselves. You know, I don't have to like any particular person. That don't mean anything's wrong with them. Um, it just not may not be my cup of tea and vice versa. So really encouraging other people to take that same approach. Um,